Hi everyone, this is Miss Boswell, Miss Phillips student teacher. If you remember, I was in your art room for a few weeks helping out before we came home from school. I thought it would be great if I could make a video today to reach out to all of you and show you a project that you can try at home. Today I'm going to show you how to make paper sculptures. That word may sound familiar because we have been talking about sculptures before we left school. If you remember, we were making clay projects. Clay is a three-dimensional art medium. Three-dimensional or 3D means that an object sticks out and it exists and it can be picked up or moved around and looked at from all sides. That's different from a painting or drawing, which is only 2D, which means it's flat. So as you're making your paper sculpture, think about other things that are 3D and 2D in your home. I'm going to get started now with showing you how we'll make our paper sculpture. You can think about your sculpture as a playground or maybe a fort, like your reading fort for this week, or maybe just an imaginary place that you wish you could visit. All right, we're going to get started now. Remember, when you finish your sculpture, to take a picture and post it to Artsonia so that Miss Phillips and I can view all of the great work that you're creating at home. All right, I'm going to get started by showing you some materials that you could use on this project. Remember, if you don't have any of these materials, that is perfectly fine, and you can think about what other materials around your house that you could use to create a paper sculpture. The first thing that you will need is some type of glue or tape. We need something to attach the papers to each other. So if you have liquid glue, tape, or a glue stick, all of these would work well to build your paper sculpture. The second thing that you will need, and you should ask your parents' permission to use, are scissors. Remember when you're using the scissors to use them safely like we discussed in art class. Another thing that you will need is paper. It could be colored construction paper like these cut into strips. If you don't have this, you could use white plain paper and color it yourself, or you could use paper from a magazine or a newspaper. Another idea, if you don't have any paper, is you could use packaging like a cereal box. Of course, without the cereal, you could use the box as the base for your paper sculpture so it's nice and sturdy. Another idea is a toilet paper roll. This could be a nice addition to a paper sculpture, as well as other things you have in your house like yarn or really anything that you want to add. You will also need a pencil to roll the paper around. Now I'm going to get started by showing you four different ways to roll and fold the paper so that you can build your own paper sculpture. Right, let's get started. To start your paper sculpture, you should choose something for your base. Preferably something strong, maybe like a cereal box, but I'm going to use this blue paper because it's pretty thick. I also want to do blue because I plan to make my paper sculpture like an island. So I cut out this crazy green shape that I'm going to glue down to my water to make it like the island that I'll build my paper sculpture on. I'm going to do that now and smooth it out. Now I'm going to show you four ways to fold the paper that you might like to do on your paper sculpture. Remember, yours doesn't have to be an island. It could be a playground. It could be a treehouse. It could be a fort or just something out of your imagination. The first thing that I'm going to show you is how to make a paper arch. For this, you will need strips of paper. I cut these ahead of time, but all you have to do is cut a straight line down the edge of your paper to create a strip of paper like this. Maybe your parents can help you if you don't feel comfortable cutting in a straight line, but I encourage you to try it. For the arch, all we will do is fold it like a rainbow. An arch is a fancy word for rainbow created a long time ago by Romans. But we cannot glue this arch down just on these tiny edges. So instead, we will fold some feet onto this arch. To do this, we will just fold back a little bit, about half an inch. And now our arch has some feet to walk on and also feet to be glued down on. So I'm going to take a little bit of my liquid glue, just a dot, not a lot, and put a little bit on each foot. When gluing your arch down, you can think about if you want the feet to be close together or far apart. 
If the feet are close together, the arch will be tall and skinny, sort of like this. I'm going to show you another one where I put the feet far apart. Notice that this paper is thicker. You can make an arch out of whatever thickness paper you have or want to cut. Now I'm going to put just a dot of glue on each foot. Oops. And glue it down. This time I'm going to put the feet far apart, as far as they can be on my small island. And you can see that this makes a much skinnier rainbow or a skinnier arch. That is two ways of adding arches to your paper sculpture. They sort of look like hills or maybe a really crazy shaped building or a bridge. Next way of folding paper that I want to show you is a zigzag or an accordion fold. This is called an accordion fold because if you fold it back up, it reminds you of the instrument and accordion, which goes like this. I'm going to show you how to do an accordion fold or a zigzag now. You take a strip of paper, whichever color and width you decide to cut, and fold it back and forth, over and under, trying to keep it in the same line. I like to put my fingers on each side and pinch it like this, then fold. Turn then fold. Turn, then fold. You get the idea. Fold it back and forth multiple times until your paper accordion or zigzag is all the way folded up. Then you can stretch it out and see the shape that it creates. This is a sharper line and it's very straight compared to the arch. The good thing about a zigzag or accordion fold is that you don't have to add feet. Instead, you just use the last bit of paper to be a foot. So I'm going to, actually I'll try some tape this time to see how it works. And take a small piece of tape and tape down my accordion to the arch. Then I will add another piece of tape at the bottom and tape it like this to the island ground. Now that I have this accordion, you can see that it sort of looks like crazy stairs or a jungle gym that you would climb up and over to reach the bridge. The next way of folding that I would like to show you is a spiral or a curly cue. It looks like this or this. To make a spiral or a curly cue, this is when you will need the pencil. Use the pencil to roll the paper around. Start it as tight as you can and roll it all the way up. If you're in third grade, you may remember doing something similar to this when we made paper magazine beads. When you roll it all the way tight and rub it down as hard as you can, when you unroll it, it becomes a very tight spiral. You can then loosen it out by stretching out your spiral and it becomes more loose like this. It sort of looks like a hamster wheel. I'm going to attach this to my paper sculpture by gluing the flat part onto the ground. Remember, if your glue seems stuck, you can make it breathe like this. Once you know it's breathing, it's ready to use. Now I have a spiral on my paper sculpture. Remember, while the glue is wet, it may be fragile. The final way of folding paper that I want to show you is making a cylinder. A cylinder sort of looks like a toilet paper roll. It is a circle that is stretched out. To make a cylinder, which could also be used as a tree on your sculpture, you will take a strip of paper and roll it around and around. If you want a smaller cylinder, roll the paper tight. If you want a bigger cylinder, roll the paper loose. Then you can use glue or a small piece of tape to attach to the side. When you're attaching this to your paper sculpture, you may want to use tape or put a little foot on the side of your paper. If I was going to do that, I would cut a little square of paper off and put a dot of glue here and here. 
Then I would press this inside of my paper sculpture. Maybe just do one dot first and fold this down. When I fold it down, I can press it down to the sculpture like this. That part's a little tricky, but I know that you can get it. Also, if you want to be able to move the elements around on your paper sculpture, you could build them separately and then attach them later or keep moving them as you play with your sculpture. Now I'm going to keep building mine and then I will show you what it looks like when it's finished. All right, I've been adding a lot to my paper sculpture and I think it's just about complete. It's almost too big to even fit in the video. As you can see, I tried to add lots of layers and build my sculpture up to be really large. I'll try to attach another video of the finished sculpture at the end. But what I want you to notice is that there are spaces that are open within my sculpture and spaces that are closed, like this wall. Whenever you finish your paper sculpture, I encourage you to play with it. Don't just make it and leave it. To play with it, you might want to use a small little Lego man or this little pet shop creature that was my sister's, or you could create your own creature to run and play within your imaginary world. I also even drew a picture of myself as a tiny version that could play within my, my little world. Another idea, once you finish your paper sculpture with your parents' permission, is to make a video of your toys playing within your paper world. Have them explore all the little mountains and crevices and valleys within your world. Thank you for playing along with me today and I hope you create an awesome paper sculpture. Whenever you finish your paper sculpture, you could take a video like I suggest, but you should definitely also take a photo of it so that you can remember it and upload it to Art Sonia so that Miss Phillips and myself can see the great things that you create. Thank you for creating with me today and I look forward to making more videos so that we can play together soon.